Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the gun guy. I'm out here at the desert with my son and uh, buddy John Ricci, and you can hear people shooting in the background. It's a, it's a busy Saturday out here in the desert on BLM land where a lot of people come out here to shoot. Uh, today we're going to be shooting the 303 infield that I got my hands on. Um, these things are really cool, and I, I love them because they have a, a real buttery smooth um, bolt action to them. They're probably the smoothest bolt action I've ever shot in my life, and they're, they're known for that. Uh, this one is a number 4 Mark I, so it's the later version of the uh, Lee Enfield, short magazine Lee Enfield. And as you can see, it's been sporterized. Uh, if you know anything about these guns, you see them all the time, and they have the, the uh, original stock that runs pretty much all the way into the, almost to the end of the barrel, and uh, quite a bit different look than this one. Somebody has taken this one and sporterized it a little bit by trimming the stock back and, and refinishing it, and obviously, at some point or other, probably used for hunting, and uh, makes a good rifle for that. Taking the wood off uh, quite a bit of it actually removes quite a bit of the weight from the rifle, too, so it makes it a little easier to lug around. Although this one, you know, they're still heavy. If you're an old guy like me and you're hunting, you know, get tired of carting big heavy rifles around. These are chambered in 303 British, which is somewhat similar, I would say, to the three, to what we call, what we know as a 308, um, the NATO round here in the United States. So these are, you know, ballistically similar to a 308. They do hit like a train. Some of the old ammo when you buy it can be a cordite, cordite which uh, can be very corrosive. So you want to be careful with that if you get one of these. Um, but even with that, if you clean it really fast uh, when you get home and you clean it right, uh, that doesn't seem to bother them uh, very much. This one has some mismatched parts, so obviously at some point or other the barrel was replaced and some other things. So as far as collector value is concerned, probably not much collector value to it. But we did shoot it a little bit, and it's a great shooter. So this is a really terrific little rifle. Um, we're going to shoot it for you here in a, in, a, in a second. You can see it. We'll see if we can hit the gong out there, which I think is a little over 100 yards. John shot it with the, um, with the range finder, and I think it was 105 or 110 yards out, so it's not that far. Um, and we should be able to clobber this thing. Uh, even I can hit something <laughs> at that distance. Now that I've said that, if I don't hit it, we're in deep trouble, huh? So in any case, there you are. That's the British Enfield Short Magazine uh, Lee Enfield 303. By the way, I've seen these chambered in 308 because people have um, had them modified, and I suppose that the owner could have that done with this, but uh, doesn't want to apparently. So we're going to run out to the range uh, and make sure the targets are up. We'll come back, we'll shoot it, and then we'll go out there and see what we did. Okay, John, you're going to have to call them out because I won't be able to see them. No problem. Here we go. Now before this thing was shooting a little to the left, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think that's exactly right. Okay, here we go. Whoa, you got the gong at the bottom of the center. I love it. You said on the bottom? Near the bottom, but uh, in the center. Okay. Just bring it up uh, three inches and you're good. Okay, here we go. Yep, we got it uh, pretty close to the middle, maybe a couple inches to the right. Okay, one more. Beautiful. Uh, near the bottom, okay. but still in the center. All right. The right, left is good. Here we go. Yeah, got it. Uh, near the bottom. Um, real close to one of your other socks. Uh, pretty good in terms of right, left. And then... Uh, Below center. Okay. They got it again, almost the identical spot. You can bring it up two or three inches, should be good. Okay. I'm going to adjust the side up a little bit. Whoa! Okay, you came up and you went right just a little bit. Okay.
beautiful. Um, you're hitting pretty consistently in the lower half. That one was just to the left of center. Okay, so we took the trek out here to go find the target for you so we could see what the heck we did. And how do you think I did, John? Well, Wait. I know there was uh, the three shots you we took at the beginning to sight everything in. Yeah. I think I see 12. These two are right next to each other. There's... Um, well, I know I missed, I think, two. One. That looks like two impacts right there. And so that you know, I think we edited the misses out to make me look better. But no, I think I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I missed two. But I think I see 12 hits. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Where are you seeing a 12 one? Uh, that looks like a double right there. Oh, I see what you mean. There's one here. Okay. Yeah, that's 12 hits out of, out of 15 rounds. I think I missed, well, I, I missed three. Um, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Actually, that's pretty good. You know, old iron sided rifle with an old guy behind it. Enfields are accurate rifles. Yeah. Now, if we just had an accurate shooter, it would be in great shape. <laughs> All right, we're going to paint this thing, go on back, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a, a last look at that rifle, okay? So go ahead, paint it, John, and off we go. We're back from the desert, and we had a great time shooting. It's a little bit of a trek out there, but it's well worth it. Uh, I like going out and shooting in the open. Do a lot of shooting at the range. Uh, but shooting in the open is just a lot more fun. And I do have the, uh, the Enfield 303 with me. I got to return it, obviously. Um, one thing I try not to do with guns that are lent to me is try, I try not to adjust the sight. So a lot of times I end up just shooting them the way they are. Uh, that means sometimes the sights are dead on, sometimes they're not. And we use Kentucky windage and adjust elevation and do the best we can with them. But I want to make sure we return them to the owner exactly the way that we got them. So in the case of this rifle, I found it was shooting a little bit to the left. I didn't want to adjust his front sight at all, and so I just used a little Kentucky windage out there in the desert. And then with the rear sight, because it's click adjustable, these sights on the, on the number four Mark I's are really terrific. They're click adjustable for elevation, and I was able to, to move it a little bit to help me out, but I was able to put it right back where we got it. So when it goes back, uh, it'll go back exactly the way we found it, and that's the way we want to return it to the owner. They are terrific rifles. They're a lot of fun to shoot. There are a couple of things you want to watch for with them. Because some of the old British, uh, uh, British uh, ammunition was um, made with cordite, it can tend to uh, really damage this first part of the barrel here. And John Ricci, my buddy, is a, a collector of firearms, so he knows a lot about that stuff. And he's actually got a little prism you can put in here, and you can see the various parts of the barrel as you go up and down to kind of check it. And he, he, you know, we were talking about this when we were at the desert, that when they shot a lot of cordite, you'll find that this first section of the barrel is the one that has the most wear. And uh, if they weren't shot with cordite, then this first section seems to be fine. The middle's got a little bit more wear. This one has not been shot with cordite, it doesn't appear, and so the barrel is more evenly worn, and so we put nothing but factory new uh, American ammunition through it. We didn't shoot any, uh, you know, surplus cordite type ammunition in it. If you have one that's shot cordite or shot old ammunition like that, it'll work just fine, run just fine. You can go ahead and continue doing that. But when you clean it, make sure that you're... Uh, I know I, I don't have, you know, uh, cordite ammunition, and I haven't got a lot of experience with that, but certainly with... Uh, primers that are um, corrosive and so on, we always spray a little Windex down them. I'm not sure why that works. I think it's the ammonia. I just know that it does, and it tends to, to deactivate the corrosive salts. So you might want to do a little research if you buy one of these and you're going to shoot the surplus ammo to make sure that you're cleaning them properly so you don't rot the barrel out and then ruin the gun. And that's kind of a sad moment when you've got a gun you enjoy shooting and all of a sudden it's destroyed. Anyway, thank you very much for watching my videos. What I will do is I'll look at some of the uh, various different cartouches and that kind of thing and the dates on this particular gun. And I'll write a little article on gunguy.tv for you about this gun and about 303s in general. So if you want to know more, you can go there. We'll put a link up here uh, just for you to go directly to that article once it's posted. And if you haven't joined the National Rifle Association and you like gun videos and you're not a member of the NRA, you need to be. So I'm going to put a link right here to make it easy for you to do that on this video. And all you have to do is click that link. It'll take you to a little website where you can join the National Rifle Association. It'll save you 10 bucks and you can become an NRA member for a year for less than the cost of one box of ammunition. Uh, and join, join the rest of us. There's millions of us, but we still need your help. Uh, also, if you don't mind sharing us Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Tumblr, if you like, and those kind of places. It would help us a lot. My son and I are trying to build our channel so we have uh, better equipment and more stuff to shoot and more places to shoot so we can produce great videos for you. So please like. I don't know which side it's on. Uh, subscribe and those kind of things. 
and uh, have a great week. Thank you very, very much for watching. I'm very grateful that you do.